Hey, Konnichiwa, true believers. It is I, Mason Williams, the pastor of the panels and host of Comics and Crosses, where we discuss the eternal truths behind our modern mythology. And today I got a really special uh, Christian perspective review for you talking about Knights of the Golden Sun. Now, um, Knights of the Golden Sun has come out it, with seven issues in 2019, I believe, 2018, 19. And so uh, in, on December 2nd, 2020, Knights of the Golden Sun is coming back with issue eight, starting a new arc. And so some of you may be curious about this Mad Cave title. Uh, Mad Cave books tend to be a little harder to come across unless you're comic shop is in the know or you know you're special ordering it so I wanted to get this video out to let you guys know about this series and you can decide whether or not you'd like to jump in so let's get right into it okay so Knights of the Golden Sun is a uh, ongoing series it's been on a bit of a hiatus but it uh, is continuing with issue 8 coming up in December and so it is a series by Mark London and Mauricio uh, Villarreal yes so um, I have read the series thus far which you can either try to track down the issues via eBay or um, pick up the trade so I'll put a link an affiliate link of mine in the description for the trade uh, graphic novels so that you can pick it up and I will say first off that I think uh, this story at least to get started is probably best in a trade um, I read the issues and I felt like it wasn't till issue four or five that I really felt like, okay, I get where this story is going and what's happening. Um, but you know, there's a lot of world building or establishing that needs to be set up, um, even though this is based on biblical things. So uh, here at Comics and Crosses, you know, I talk about the eternal truths behind our modern mythology. I explore comic books and the... Um, um, themes and things that tie back to uh, ideas from Holy Scripture, from Christian philosophy and, and ideas. Um, and this one is tremendously derivative. Obviously, if you don't know the story, Knights of the Golden Sun is actually about the Archangels of Heaven, although described as Providence. Heaven is called Providence in this series. Um, and their battles with Lucifer and uh, the dynamics of the angels in heaven, the warring angels specifically, the archangels they call them. This story takes place in the, I guess you could say, 400 years of silence in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, the, the story uh, starts with the archangel Michael uh, still having a heart for redemption for Lucifer even though he Lucifer who is Satan who has led a third of the angels in a rebellion a war against God and against the archangels and then was cast down uh, because of it I'll first just kind of set up what the story is uh, my general thoughts and then we can get into the actual details of the story for those of you who might uh, want to just have a recap and jump in on issue 8 so uh, this story, um, a lot of unique names. Um, there's some like Michael, you know, but then there's Azrael, um, there's Uriel, there's um, you know Solo I don't know something weird, uh, you know. So and and me, I'm the kind of person who like I have a hard time remembering names of all the people I meet. Uh, so if you're like that, like me, it may be a little tricky to track for a while, but you can basically remember what characters look like in the book. Um, so I would say that this story um, is uh, one of kind of war and of uh, relationships. It, um, it shows sort of behind the scenes of some things we know about from the Bible, from scripture, but certainly embellishes and expounds upon them in a way that I will say is not, um, is not like sacrilegious or irreverent or anything. Um, it is uh, certainly imaginative, um, but I was surprised at how many of the things actually do derive, you know, from somewhere in scripture that keep this thing sort of, um, 
sound or, or rooted to something. If you're looking for something that is, is straight um, biblical history or something like that, this, this will not be that, although there are some aspects of it, but um, it is a, a, a cool story. I think that when it all comes together in the last few issues, um, it's, it's, it's good, and they've kind of set up, and I think this first arc establishes something uh, that could be interesting. Uh, Story-wise, um, there is sort of a sense of things just kind of moving along, sort of hitting beats. A lot of things happen, and even though it's over seven issues, I felt as if a lot of scenes just seem to um, kind of end abruptly or move on without much. Things were not very drawn out. Um, there were maybe a couple scenes that were drawn out, and those I really enjoyed, like there's an exchange with Lucifer and these giants, and that whole thing was something that stuck with me, a very, kind of a longer portion of a book. Um, but there's a lot of these uh, little things, and there are a number of different characters that are bouncing back and forth, so um, that's part of it, uh, negotiating all that, managing all that. Um, and then the artwork, I would say, by Mauricio uh, Villarreal um, is certainly a distinct style. It's, um, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first. Um, it's very atmospheric, and so a lot of times I feel as if we're seeing characters without much, with kind of like a, maybe it's angelic uh, a haze around them, or just kind of, uh, almost just felt like people were constantly swirling in a, in a space. There, there's certainly uh, some images of towns and buildings and things, um, but I felt like it was a lot of characters standing in an indescript space. So that was a little tough for me. Uh, it didn't really give us um, context or framing, and a lot of times in the fighting, you would see people flying around, but always seemingly flying through the air. At the same time, I will say that the artwork is very colorful, very vibrant, very um, interesting, and it has almost a haze effect on it, like a dream sequence. So, I don't know if this is meant to be the fact that this is an angelic story, that we're dealing with angels, that, you know, often descriptions of them are seeing a bright light and, you know, being kind of wrapped in confusion, um, but it felt a little way in this, a little bit that way in the story, just the way that things were, the artwork came out. Um, but um, the colors and the vividness of it, really cool. Um, the angels uh, were, uh, and the and the, I guess fallen angels were all very uh, striking, and and you know, so cool characters. Um, I'll let you decide for yourself on on the artwork. This story follows Michael the Archangel um, in a time where Father, who is God, they call him Father in this book has um, left his throne in heaven, is seemingly missing. And nobody knows why, nobody knows where he's gone. Um, and Michael decides to visit Lucifer. He has basically a burden to see Lucifer restored, but Lucifer immediately betrays him and I think kills him or stabs him. Um, and next thing you know, Lucifer's free and uh, Michael is being brainwashed by someone else. I think we jump around in time a little bit, so I, I can't recall if time had changed. Um, but then basically Michael is sort of in a beaten, fallen state, and he thinks he's somebody else, and the angels are looking for him, and now there's real nervousness and confusion because even Michael the Archangel is missing. And then there's this other character, Israel, who has some other weird kind of plans, who even, I think, one-ups Lucifer and gets him to forget who he is, too. So, I don't know, it's some kind of magic or something that this character does. So then, what we come to find out that the story is, or the kind of what's happening is, um, there is the bloodline of David um, that the angels want to protect because the intention is for the light of God, uh, they call it, they refer to it as the golden sun uh, to come through David's bloodline and to come into humanity to save humanity. And so um, Michael being restored takes up this mantle of being a knight of the golden sun and defending David's bloodline, defending humanity so that uh, the, the golden sun, basically so that Christ can be born 
through uh, the bloodline of King David from ancient Old Testament Bible times. Then there is a big battle. Um, Israel actually is uh, wants to take providence. Uh, she is this this antagonist character is actually uh, one of the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer. Um, but we find out that she wants to get back into Providence and um, basically the angels, the fallen angels are mad at Lucifer for kind of abandoning them and not not coming up with a plan B. Uh, he's been obsessed actually with um, destroying uh, the bloodline of David because he knows, he actually, uh, we find out, was originally the Knight of the Golden Sun was the one who was supposed to protect David's bloodline so that Christ could be born. And he rebelled against God and fell. And so he's the only one who seems to know of the fallen angels why that's significant. The rest of them just want to get back in and take the throne. If you're still tracking with me, this is a story. Okay, so at the end there's a confrontation. Uh, Israel seems to um, seems to uh, bring people back from the dead and make them kind of like these warrior um demonic uh anti-angels or like to fight the archangels chief of which is alexander the great so alexander the great is has been brought back he was obviously a conqueror more on that in a second and um they fight have it out uh alexander the great is is wounded and takes off uh, wounded by Michael the Archangel, Knight of the Golden Sun now, and uh, Israel is killed, I believe, and so um, that's where the story kind of ends. Okay, guys, so um, biblical themes and things that come up in this story. Um, obviously, there's the idea of archangels, um, Michael, Gabriel, you know, some of these are actually mentioned in scripture. Um, the concept of angels warring uh, is actually something that really is mentioned in scripture. So um, there is mention of Lucifer leading a rebellion in heaven and a third of the angels falling and uh, being cast down to the earth. That's where we get the concept of demons is actually fallen angels. Now, um, to really back up and, and be holistic here, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, angels... Um, Maybe you know them as cherubs, as fat little babies with wings that are naked floating on clouds. Um, you know, that's, <laughs> that's one idea um, that's kind of become uh, entered into society. But angels actually in scripture, in the Bible, are, are big. They have wings. Um, there's even unique creatures that are mentioned in scripture having multiple wings, um, having the appearance of different creatures, and, um, and singing praise unto God, the almighty creator, for all of eternity. And the idea of angels warring, so we see that in the fight against Lucifer that is mentioned in this story that's kind of like a backup history for this story. Um, and then the uh, there's even mention in Daniel uh, where he prays for um, for help from God and eventually Daniel Daniel in the scriptures uh, there's an account of him meeting an angel encountering an angel who um, says that he was sent as soon as the first prayer went up but that he was uh, delayed because he had to battle with the prince of Persia or a a a spirit a demonic um, principality a power over a certain region so um, it, it's believe me studying uh, the Bible and scripture can be very complex can take a lot of history and understanding and digging into the language and I'm certainly summarizing here I'm uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before but I'm actually a Bible college dropout so I do know a thing or two but um, I want it to be for the sake of conversation and understanding the, this story and some of these themes. So, um, yes, there, uh, there, we've seen that in Scripture. Um, and actually, the whole concept of uh, Alexander the Great, that's one thing that, um, that uh, comes into play here. It may have seemed strange for those of you thinking, oh, I thought this was a biblical thing. Maybe they're just pulling randomly from history. Uh, you know, maybe it's like uh, Philadelphia using uh, John Adams or, you know, um, it's like, okay, well, there's, you know, that's kind of cool. But 
actually, um, in Scripture, um, there was ancient prophecy in Daniel's time, too, that actually spelled out the different empires that would rule the earth. It was a prophecy, so it was kind of phrased differently, but to summarize the, the uh, empire of Alexander the Great that would quickly take over like a cheetah would move fast and spread across the land and then end suddenly uh, was actually prophesied in Old Testament scripture. Um, at least that's the conclusions that um, most uh, Bible scholars, historians have found actually both um, Christian and non-Christian uh, note the fact that the prophecies mentioned in scripture do shadow directly the empires that unfolded from that time on some of the major world empires yeah so there's a lot of uh, uh context and subtext here there's a lot of uh things going on uh in scripture jesus did actually come from uh the bloodline of king david that was um part of the the significance of you know him and that he was jesus was actually supposed to be a part of the royal bloodline in that he was heir to and king of israel king of the hebrew people as they were god's uh chosen people god's um specific people because of an ancient agreement between god and abraham and a relationship that they had based on faith but a lot of these things are uh we can never know and needed to be expanded upon in a creative way and i think mark london has done that i think um it's a cool interesting story it's 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 fascinating i liked it more as it went on i think this would be a great read in trade uh to be able to just enjoy the whole story and to go through and kind of see what happens the way it comes together at the end was pretty uh fulfilling rewarding so i'm interested to see where uh he would take it from here so if you want to jump on again uh december 2nd uh is knights of the golden sun issue eight and it'll be going on forward from there for at least one more arc i don't know what the future plans are um but yeah so that is a, a detailed um christian perspective review on on the story so if you'd like to jump in i hope you do um check out the description for you can get my affiliate link to pick up a um trade paperback and um check in with your lcs to make sure that they're ordering them the new issues or uh you can even go direct to mad cave uh for that so uh thanks guys for tuning in and i will check you next time peace